And we're all getting on guys. Long time no see. First time back on the bank. Hope everyone's doing well after the lockdown and enjoying their time back in the spring conditions. At least it's heated up a little bit now. So uh, I'd say I'd like to say I've just arrived at Smith and Hardwick, but I ain't. Been looking around for a couple of hours and I found the only free peg on the lake. There's all the barrow and that all behind me, still loaded up. It's like quarter past six now. Got here at like quarter past three. Uh, this is the only free peg I'll spin you around. Right out there, look. It's the corner peg as soon as you come in. I think it's peg one. Don't quote me on that. So the traffic behind me is uh, just decided to pick up as I turn the camera on. I think this is a deep corner. And it looks quite murky as well. So uh, yeah, literally just got here about 60 seconds ago. So I'm just having a look the same as you guys are. I suppose I better get a lead out there and uh, try and find a spot for this evening. Just going to literally chuck the brolly over myself for the night. Got the Titan in the van ready to go. So we're going to be moving. It's a guaranteed move. We'll be packed up by half seven in the morning. And we're going to be on the move. And we're going to be over at Manor. There's a few pulling off. That's what we're here for, that big linear. I said I'll be back this spring. And I'm loaded up and I'm ready for it this time. So we're going to get over there. There's five pulling off tomorrow. And believe me when I tell you, this is the last peg. On the, on the whole complex pretty much. I think there's one other free peg. Uh, this is quite close to the car park. The other one was on St John's and it was about a mile walk. So I thought just get on here for 12 hours. If I pinch a bite, I pinch a bite. If not, it gives me time to knock a few rigs up and uh, get back in the old fishing mind. So it's a beautiful evening. We've got some nice weather while we're here at 16 degrees. And uh, hopefully we'll pinch a big gal. We're in a good moon phase. Just just one before the full moon. So, uh, yeah. Best I get to it. So uh, we'll catch up a bit later on this evening. Hopefully if I have time before it gets dark. If not, we'll catch up bright and early when I'm on the hunt around Manor. Well, I found a couple of spots now. Walking down the side here, I ain't got the rods in yet, but I just dropped a bit of bait in. Just coming to check to see where I was landing. Yeah, there's the coot. That's a sure fine mark, right where I am. And my lead is landing. Actually right there, like you can see it just behind a tree. Right there. She's over the spot now, she knows where it is. Sweet, so that's perfect. I found the spot. It's not actually as deep as I thought in this corner. So I don't think it's the deep corner. I think it's up you right up down the end there. This is like the road bank as you come in to Brazenose 1 and 2. So the deep corner's up the other end. So I found about 8 foot, which seems to be a good depth for this time of year. Nothing's coming out. Like I say, I'm going to drop one just off these snags, about two rod limps off. And I got one out well open water ish at 19 right so that looks pucker I'm gonna get back now drop the two rods in only fishing two for tonight and uh, hopefully we'll pinch a bite Wow, look at that. The traps are set. My first night in more than six months or more. And I'm back on the bank, we're doing it. Back down at Linear. I said I was gonna be back to have a go for that chem piece. And here we are, it's not been out. It's due out in the next two or three weeks. And I'm gonna do my best to get it. Car just went past. 
It sounds so loud this time of night. It's just so quiet around here. I only dropped the two rods in, like I said. Got one in over there. About 17 odd wraps over towards the margin. And then one, where are we? Out there, about 19, just over 19 wraps. So the temperature's crashing. It's going to be minus one tonight. But tomorrow's set to be another nice day at about 16 degrees. Here comes another car. Hold on. But do you know what? I just had to get out. Couldn't wait any longer. I've been so choked with work. It just feels good to be back. There we go, look. All looking good for tonight. Uh, to be fair, I'm not really expecting too much. The water looks a bit of a funny colour, and uh, right up this stretch here, there's about uh, down there, down there, down there, down there. There's about seven people fishing. No one's had nothing in the last sort of 48 hours, so I'm not holding much hope out. But uh, we're here for Kempis, and anything in between that is just an absolute bonus. Oh, and I got some new rods we'll talk about that tomorrow though because we're losing the light fast so uh, I thought I'd just share this beautiful view with you before I kick back and uh, get an early night because I'm going to be up and tidied up and everything bang on the trolley ready to rock and roll in the morning we've got a small window of opportunity to get a peg over there there's four people pulling off and we've got to make the most of it and at least get one of them it's absolutely rammed. This was the last peg on the whole complex that I've squeezed into. But uh, yeah, one of them ones, I was going to just camp out under the stars for the night, but I thought, nah, I found this peg. I thought the rods are going out. I can't, can't physically hold off any longer. I've held off for two months or so. I've not been done no day sessions. And I think you've been allowed back for about three weeks or so now. And I still haven't been out. Biding my time, onwards and upwards, time to kick back and uh, I'll see you guys bright and early. Morning people, excuse the traffic coming behind me, we're on that sort of rush hour in the morning. Uh, nothing happened last night, one guy four pegs down and a pike, a pike you know, that's it. None of us have had anything. Two guys packing up next to me. They've been here two or three nights. They've had nothing. Uh, so yeah, it's looking a bit bleak. But uh, I've been a bit lucky. Being this was the last peg on the complex, I've lucked out. There's fish in front of me today. I've woke up this morning. It's a quiet corner. I think by me just keeping two rods out is definitely the best thing to do. Don't no reason to push the fish out maximize I've got three baited spots now I've just done a big area of about 12 foot and I've moved both rods to that spot where I've seen fish I've left the two spots I baited up yesterday I only put four spots on each rod and I'll keep an eye on them as the day goes on and uh, move the rods back there if need be but right now we've got both rods on a 12 foot double spot and I've just put four spots over the top keeping to the minimal got a bag on each rod and uh, we're going to play it by ear from there. But it's, it's a lot colder than it was meant to be. Last night was a cold one. Not quite minus one, but it definitely dipped down. How bad is that? So they are fizzing up out there. Not far from where that seagull landed. You can see it sort of centre screen there. Yeah, they're uh, fizzing up a little bit there. I've managed to get two rods in amongst them and drop a bit of bait in and they're still there. And how I did that, look, I'll just show you. So you see out near that coot out there? Right about there. What I did, I seen the fizzing up this morning. So I got my spod rod, I dipped it in the water and I cast the fish and where the bubbles were I was six foot past them to allow for the swing back in the 14 foot water and then I pulled that in once I got the right distance clipped it up clipped both my rods to it 
and that's how I got the distance. And now I'm, I'm landing bang on their heads, so only time will tell from here. I'm due to whack a bit of brekkie on, spin you around here, sort of everything jumbled up. But uh, we are ready to move. We're going to have a fry up first. Got a bit of black pudding with us. A bit of black pudding, boys. Get it down, ya. So uh, we're going to get tucked into that for now. And we're going to go and have a walk around Manor about 11 half 11. The car park was full again today. Even though they put on the Facebook page, don't come because we're full, the car park's full again. So uh, hopefully I'm going to give them a chance to disperse and hopefully a few people will drop off this afternoon at the manor and I'll get a chance to get back over there and have a look. See you in a bit. Right then guys, finally got the move on to manor. I'm right on the furthest part. Literally it's about half a mile walk with all your, your gear and all sorts. Had to do it in a couple of trips. But we got here at last. And uh, this little butte became free. Managed to get a bucket in it just as old matey was leaving. And there was other people waiting about. The place is absolute ramo. Where are them ducks off to down there? Oh buggers. Yeah, so we're in it. We're here. Chance of the big linear tonight. Got full moon phase. It's not too bad. Guess it can happen, I guess, but who knows? I've got no confidence at the minute. Confidence is something you've got to earn in carp fishing. I've never had a bite on the bottom in this lake. Fished it once, had one, one on the top and lost one on the top. And uh, unfortunately that session, I couldn't buy a bite. Let me just get out here, you can see it's starting to spit. We drew a bit of rain throughout the night. Let me walk you down. There's camp for the next 24, well, 48 hours actually. So I'll stop for another two nights now I made the move. So uh, my heart weren't in the other lake, Smith and Hardwick's. So I had to jump on there because there's nowhere else to go. But my heart weren't in it. And uh, it's got a bit of an algae bloom on there. There's only one fish out between 20 of us in like 48 hours. Which is pretty darn, pretty darn hard for how many fish are in there, like 13 to 1500. But this is... Uh, where we want to be and we're here just to give you guys a rough idea look over there look that's the road bank and then you've got a couple of pegs here for those who know it and I'm the third one along so I control this middle section of water here although I can't go too far out can't really go past 16 17 wraps maximum just because I don't want to be uh, fishing at the bottom of someone else's line so I'll be cut off if I go too far out. And here, look, everyone's bivvied up across there. There, there, there. So there's no more free pegs. Someone just went home next to me. And someone's, even this time of night, has just jumped straight in there. Don't blame him. Big Lynn's due. So yeah, here's my new rods. I've got the Grey's Air curves. I've got them in the three pound test curve. Slightly lighter than the three and a halfs. I still punch them like 22 wraps, no problem. So I fancied something a little bit bendier. Although my three and a halfs are really soft because the Grey's Air Curves are soft. I just wanted something even softer, why not? Treat myself. I haven't bought no new rods for a good few years, so... And there they all are, look, traps nicely set on the dogs. Got the single stick there and the double. I've got back leads on these two one ounce back leads on them and this one is on a real shallow spot that leads out shallow right the way to the spot and I'm fishing in about four and a half foot of water so I haven't bothered back leading that I've just sort of sunk the line a little piece and uh, we're good to go there so uh, the rain's picking up time for me to pick back up and get in the bivvy get tucked up for the night start thinking about getting some grub on catch you in a bit
morning people. Just keeping everyone updated where we're at. So we moved to the manor last night. Well, yesterday afternoon, managed to get the rods in early evening. Nothing happened. I know you see uh, two of my rods pulled in down there off the alarms, but unfortunately nothing happened. It's about 10 o'clock now. So 20 minutes ago, I pulled the rods in. So the rest that big area out there. Hopefully something will drift in today. I just put five spots over each spot and I've created a new spot. So the two rods that are down there on the alarms there, they were fished on a double spot, sort of 10 foot apart. I'm now peeling one out and putting it out this way in the middle section. So I'm going to have three rods on three separate spots and they're quite, well, they're, they're, they are spaced apart nicely, probably what, 20 yards in between each rod, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Just trying to pinch a bite at this point. This place seems to be my bogey place. I'm yet to get a bite off the bottom. But we did last night and we've got tonight to go. So uh, feeling hopeful as always. And uh, really I just want my first fish of 2021. Just to get off the mark. So yeah, I'm going to rest this for at least two hours. I'm not going to put them rods back out. I'm going to put some new hooks on. Sharpen them up. Uh, like I said, I've dropped some bait in now. Hopefully that will draw the fish in, give them a bit of a free area with no lines out there, and then uh, I can drop the rods back in over the top at any point. If the fish do show up in a certain area, because I've got all the areas covered now, I've got three big baited areas, I can just drop another rod straight on it and get two rods fishing for them straight away. Another one come out over there. As usual, well, for the second time I've been here, the fish are showing all the way over the back there. Nowhere near me, unfortunately. It just uh, so happens that sometimes you've got to jump in where you can. This was the last peg when I arrived, and uh, I was grateful to get this. But we're only here for one fish. It might sound stupid, but a lot of the other big ones have been out, nearly all of them, apart from the big linear. And uh, I like to think that all my free rods are in sort of five to seven foot of water. I'm not looking for a big hit, I'm just looking for a big linear. Right, time to get the grub on. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet and uh, we'll catch up a bit later on. Well guys, certainly nothing to report on tonight's evening update. Just nothing. Grey and rain, that's all it's done all day. Been bivvy bound. And it absolutely rained cats and dogs all night last night. The lake itself has actually come up four inches or more. So uh, there are a lot of fish showing, but it just so happens they're on... If you could section this lake into six pieces, it's it's the sixth piece furthest away from me yet again. Unfortunately, it's just the way it keeps happening for me on here. It's my second session on here, and the same's happened again. Unfortunately, it just can't be helped. I managed to slip into the last peg, which I'm not complaining about, mind you. You've got to be in it to win it. She's still out there swimming about somewhere. Uh, it's just unfortunate there's no carp here at all. They're over, all over here, all in the deep water again. I'll maybe just add one where they're all showing. You know, I don't think these fish are the hardest fish to catch, uh, but you definitely got to be on them. There, there's no carp in this half of the lake at all. Not a single show or single bubble or, or nothing. No signs of carp whatsoever. And we're actually in the shallower end. And we've had all this cold rain today and it's pretty cold tonight. So we've still got really cold evenings. And it hasn't gone above sort of six or seven degrees today. And so it's give the carp no reason to get down here in the shallows. But tomorrow we've got a bit of sun. So uh, I'm not holding much hope, mind you. It's just one of them things that don't feel quite right. But it's carp fishing. Stranger things have happened. All there is up here is it's just birds. Look at them all. Birds, birds, birds. But uh, I'm not complaining, it's a beautiful place to be. I'm right down the end, I'm tucked up out of the way. 
and you don't get anyone walking behind you, you've got no traffic from the road and uh, it's just lovely, it's beautiful to be back out not going to lie, a cart will uh, make it a little bit nicer I'm not bothered resetting the traps although the middle, the middle rod fell four foot short but I've left it, I caught it as it hit the water and I've seen the separation as it went down and it went down with a nice little thud so it was four foot between mates I thought I'd leave it what's the point the middle rod I was thinking about wanging right, oh, right out there long so like 23 wraps or so but then I thought you know what's the point of moving it five wraps or so if the carp are not here, the carp are not here stick to the plan, stick to the baited traps all three are on sm slightly little baited areas uh, the middle rod less less bait on there there's like four spoms maybe five the other two I've got sort of nine in between nine and thirteen uh, I'm not fully filling them so uh, they're not you know just not smashing full spoms out there but but there's enough bait if the carp come into the area I should hold them be sorry I keep tilting the, the camera down I'm leaning on leaning on the uh, Bivy door letterboxed and it's just pushing down a bit of bad recording there so yeah fingers crossed hopefully something's going to happen you never know we're going to get grubbed up soon I had a little afternoon nap earlier and done that for a while it just rained all day all day and uh, it was just cold and wet you could bet and because the, the the rain was pumping in here I couldn't even letterbox it so I had to go complete darkness you know for a couple of hours it's nice to have the door back open. I'm going to watch this evening set in, and hopefully with a bit of sun in the morning, it might bring the carp up here. If the carp do come up here, I've got this area completely mapped out. I'm sure I'm going to get a bite. If they even come remotely close, I can ping leads about anywhere. I know all the clear spots and everything. I've got that all sorted up. They've got here close, far out, and I've got them spanned out right the way from they're all the way along there sort of like little spots and nooks and crannies are found so you know the fish i will be hunting down the big gals as soon as they get here if they get here so uh, until then hold tight and we'll catch up in the morning finally this is what i've been waiting for absolute epic sunrise this morning it's only about 7 30 now still really early it's just nice to see some sun it's been belting down with rain for probably 30 hours or more now and uh, I don't know if any of you guys seen my last vlog on here rain on this lake is just not the one it seems to just completely destroy the fishing especially as both times I've been situated in, in shallower water uh, yeah so they've just headed into the deep water plenty of fish still showing again let me just move the camera here this time they're even further away from me, this time they're right over here look I think, don't quote me on this, it might be peg one it's the corner peg on the road bank and there had been a guy in there for three or four days and not even seen a carp and they've moved in there now, maybe due to the, the early sun it uh, looks quite warm over there and they're right in tight on the margins I've seen probably what, 10 or 15 shows in the last hour and it seems that they've just moved from here and they're across to there but I say majority of the fish are in between I'm going to call it peg 1 and uh, peg 19 and I haven't seen a carp anywhere else I haven't seen a carp on this half of the lake no, what I know no one's caught, caught a fish over there at all all along that side where Browns is and, and towards the bay there and uh, yeah, every peg is taken, so I can't I can't move. I've got no choices really. Just gonna have to sit this one out. I ain't got to leave till six o'clock tonight. I've got twelve hours. I'd say in the next, not right now because there's no car up here. I've been watching since this morning, and it's been flat calm all on the ridge. And I can't go too far out from here. All across there, I can see all my spots. Even one right there. I've got them nicely spread out to see if anything shows up, but. Not a single sign of a car, unfortunately. Uh, seen a tench roll this morning, a big tench. And I, I actually had a tench yesterday evening, about 10, 11 pound, big one. But uh, that's not what we're after, is it? But 
It was nice to get a bend in the rod all the same, being they're my new rods and I've never seen them bend like that. So we're just going to hold tight, we're on the back of the wind for today. It's nice and sunny. We've just got to cross our fingers and hope one or two fish get into this shallower water uh, and maybe we'll pinch a bite. I just wanted to show you, look, look at that spot being retrieved there. Them two guys, I think they're in pegs three and four. Or two and three, either way. They're casting right out here, look. Camera's gone a little bit misty because the sun's heating the inside up. But this is only a quick update, so they're casting right out here. All the way over there, don't get me wrong, an amazing cast. <laughs> I don't think I can cast that far. But they're just casting right over the fish. The fish are within 10 or 15 wraps. And this is the problem, this is what's been going on since I got here. The fish are all tucked up in here, look. They've been showing right down, all along there sort of in that deeper water but everyone wants to cast out to that middle piece don't get me wrong I'm not saying they won't get bites out there but there's another spawn but I've only seen a couple of shows out there since I've been here all the shows have been in closer I feel like it's just just a waste of a of another day for them guys I don't know why they just wouldn't drop them back to 10 or 15 wraps where all the fish are showing, they, they, can't, they, they must know the fish are showing, it's been 25 shows this morning but they still want to cast right over the top of them, I mean they must be fishing 20 wraps past where the fish are showing and you know there's been one fish show out there in the last 24 hours to where there's been 40 or 50 in the last 24 hours over there I don't know, I just think I'm just carp deprived sitting over here. I just want, I just want to be on fish, but... Oh well. Some you win, some you lose. We'll see what the day brings. Well, 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 look at that. What a difference an hour can make. So I was just currently behind this bush, camping for two nights. And I uh, just moved up to the next peg up, gives me a different section of water. And I bagged two, straight away. There they are, languishing down there. So I watched the carp, they travelled from all the way down here. I showed you where they were this morning, right down there in peg one. And they were travelling really close in. And everyone's casting way over the top of them and they're coming all the way down here all the way down here and they got to about there and they stopped so uh, I had a quick lead out one lead bang found a hard spot clipped it up got two rods on it two bags a spawn on each rod and then I knew I'd intercept them as they come this way further down and then they got to here and I intercepted one I got the rod back out and I intercepted another so happy days I told you we'd get them if there was a chance we'd get on them we get them. Right, we're going to get them out now, and uh, one's already a 30. I've just weighed the second one, she's a scraper. So and we'll weigh the second one and uh, see what we got. Right, so this was the first part, and it's the smaller one of the two. Nice wrinkly old mirror. I'm going to get this one up and weigh it, actually. I haven't weighed this one. I know the other one is a scraper 30, but this one uh, looks mid-20, maybe 27. Be right back. Just about touching twenty six. Not 
bad guess. Ah, they do fight hard when the sun's been out here. It gives a chance to weed, for the weed to let out loads of oxygen and the fish just absolute beast mode. Let's get her up quickly. She's gonna beat me up a little bit. She's been in the retainer for half an hour, this one. It's obviously the other rod one. Let's see if we can get her up without her beating me up too much. Some guys. <sighs> Love it when a plan comes together. Come on, baby, calm down. Just got to keep her low for a minute. She's just tensing up. And there we go. Lovely. That should be good now. Just touching 26, this one. Lovely old wrinkly thing. Got some shoulders on her, big old head. Lovely. Drop a bit of water on her. I had to be honest, it looked bigger, a little bit bigger than 26. I was saying 27, I thought it was going to go 28 really. I was being modest. But just goes to show you keep an eye on the water at all times. I followed them carp more than 200 metres or more. Watched where they're coming. Seen little telltale signs, tiny little signs of carp. And it's turned into more or less a double duo. Get her up one last time before we say goodbye. There she is. Happy days. Loving life at Linear once again. Bang. Right. To get you back, save the day. And uh, it's been a grueling two nights. So uh, a fish on the bank is an absolute buzz. But I'll be right back with a bigger one. she is. Just letting her get her breath back. Thank you baby. You turned a two day blank into an absolute dream. So we're going to let her out now. You ready to go pup? Let's get her right back. She goes. Wrong way. She might go in that weed and soak in the weed. Look how clear the water is. Back to the deep. Oh, here we are. The second one. This one I actually thought was going to be bigger. Big old head on it. Lovely looking condition this one. Quite a deep, short, fat fish. Get a bit of water on her. Oh, loving it. Nice double run. Top bodice, 30 pound an ounces. Nice muscle pack mirror. Unit, this one, a real thick fish. Loving it. I don't care what they look like to be honest. Short, fat, long, thin. Just wanted to christen the rods and get my first bite of 2021. And we've done that, we're off the mark. And we got there in style with a nice 30 pounder again. Loving it. Thanks, big girl. <laughs> I'm gonna slip you back into that gin clear water that you come out of. And we're going to get that rod reset because I've only got one rod fishing now. I'm only going to fish two for today. And uh, we're going to go ahead and try and pinch another bite before we leave off at six. Got a good eight hours left yet, so you never know. The big girl's still out there. Let's get her back. Right guys, something unbelievable has just happened. Just had another double take. I was just putting the other rod back on the stand for and recasting it from the first fish. And the second one just roared off. I've got an absolute chunk here. And there's a 40 pound up, boom! 40 pound, five ounces it is. Just had to get 
old boy next door to come and give us a hand weighing it and that. And uh, got my first man of 40. Absolute unit. It is literally this thick. Unbelievable, guys. I can't believe it. Oh, so after that double, double take earlier, I was just sitting there reminiscing, enjoying a bit of the sunlight. And, uh, well, let me just get her up. Because this fish is an absolute tank on another level. Let's see if I can get her right. Oh, move that out of the way. 40 pounder, guys. First session back, 2021. A 30 and a 40 after doing a 48 hour blank and moving off a of Smith and Hardwick onto the only free peg. I got my toes this morning, moved, and I've had four fish just in the daytime. These fish are swimming in and out under people's lines. People don't even know they're there. I clocked them this morning, I followed them down, followed them more than 200 metres, followed the, the signs of carp and my watercraft has gone and banked me this epic 40 pound chunk. <laughs> 40 pound, five ounces she went. <laughs> and she's a heavy one, <laughs> loving it. First bites off the bottom here, Chris and my new rods. Stepped down to the three pound test curve rods as the weed's not so high. And the fights have just been absolutely incredible. Look at that, 40 pounder on the bank and I'm I was nearly swore. I'm bloody buzzing. Let's go with that. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm going over in two and a half hours, but I've still got three rods fishing. Just sorted them back out. Look at her. Mwah. You absolute unit. <laughs> Let's get around and have a look on the other side quickly. Oh. Right, so on the take, our mate he was here when I was playing the fish next door. Uh, I would have sworn in the first three minutes it was a tench, it was a real twitchy take and then I thought it was a tench, then I thought it was a small carp and then it woke up and it just beast moded me all around the swim for a good 15 minutes and then I seen it and I, I couldn't believe my eyes I really couldn't, just goes to show you, it was head knocking just like a small carp would <sighs> and there you go look, a 40 pounder, manor farm, brute Second session ever on this lake. Done a 40 off St. John's now on my second session. And I've done a 40 off Manor on my second session. Done a 30 last session. And a 30 and a 40 here. Look at that. Wow. Right, I'm going to slip her back. She's a big heavy girl. Can't keep me out of the water too long. It might be time for another one. The big linny is still swimming about. She's the only one that ain't been out this year. All the other big ones have. So. I'm going to make the most of every last minute this session. Right, hold tight guys and uh, we'll chat in a bit. Well, it's nearly time to wrap this session up and say goodbye. I don't know when I'll be back out now. My dog's currently pregnant and uh, is due to give birth any day now. My little baby, gonna have loads of little Jessica rabbits running about. But yeah, the traps are still set, it's seven o'clock now. I rang the missus and said I'm gonna give it to eight and it's a two and a half hour journey home. She's still swimming out there, the linea's still out there. Old Kempis, no one's out there yet. As long as she's swimming out there, I've gotta give it every minute, right? Of course I've had a 40 and a 30, I'm over the moon, don't get me wrong. I'm absolutely buzzing my nut off. But, I worked hard to get the rods back out there and reset. And they're all bang on the money now. All back leaded up. That next bite could be Kempi's. Everyone's on edge, because we know she's the only big one that's not been out. So whenever you hear an alarm or see one get a bite, you almost expect it to be her next. But it's been a great session, I've enjoyed it. Tonight has been an absolute beautiful night. I'm glad I stuck it out. Nice to have a bit of sunshine this evening. You can see, look at that. Let's walk up here. Look at this mess, guys. God, I'm a nightmare. Look at it. A bomb has gone off up here. But uh, we're piecing bits together now and we're drying things out. I'm slowly loading the trolley. I'm going to get it done in one hit. I'm going to get home. The kids are moaning that they miss me. Bless them. 
It's hard when you've got little girls in it. Daddy's little girls and all that, you lot know how it is. But uh, yeah, making the most of every minute of this session. I've got a night ticket. Uh, really, I should be staying another night, but uh, due to work, I can't. I've already blagged this week and I shouldn't have done, but you know, carp fishing comes first every now and then, doesn't it? Especially when you're fishing for probably the best linear carp in the country. So uh, we're gonna leave it here now because I am a bit low on battery. I'll say goodbye until the next ones. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and keep following along. Uh, subscribe, make sure you don't miss no upcoming videos. You never know where I'm gonna pop up next. If there's big carp, I'll be there and it might be a lake near you. So uh, take it easy and I'll see you on the next one.